Welcome to Mid with Made Simple. This video is about triple assessment of breast. If you're new to my channel, I'd highly recommend you to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon which is next to it so you can watch you can keep watching all my medical videos for free. The triple assessment, assessment of a breast lesion involves clinical assessment, radiological imaging, and histopathological examination. The good thing about triple assessment uh, of a breast lesion is that the positive predictive value is about 99.9% which means the screening comes positive uh, for a patient it means that the 99.9% of the time the patient has the disease so that's uh, a great uh, specificity and sensitivity in the case of triple assessment so first of all we need to do clinical assessment for the patient so that completes one third of the uh, thing in triple assessment so here we ask history from the patient. We, we are going to ask about the onset, duration, progression, associated symptoms like uh, nipple discharge, nipple retraction and uh, blood discharge from the nipple and all that from the patient. And we need to ask some uh, related comorbidity history, family history of malignancy and all that in the history part. Followed by that we go for examination. First we do inspection where we inspect the breast of the patient and we try to see any skin changes or any obvious masses or any uh, as abnormalities in the similarity of the breasts on both sides and we also see uh, various changes like nipple retraction, puckering of skin, dimpling of skin and puerperi or appearance and all that okay followed by that we go for palpation where we try to palpate the uh, swelling and we try to see the size extent of the swelling and all that in palpation uh, followed by that we go for radiological imaging okay in radiological imaging we have three choices we can do mammography ultrasound and mri first let's talk about mammography this is one of the most commonly preferred um, tool for screening for breast cancer as well as a diagnostic tool in breast malignancies and various breast lesions in uh, patients and uh, this is a contact radiography procedure okay so the breast of the patient is kept in contact with the x-ray uh, machine and then it's taken and uh, the things you need to know about mammography is that it is preferred for uh, women over 40 years of age that's because the breasts in women over 40 years of age is lesser in density and more of fat so the picture uh, there are four mammography pictures below the one in the extreme left shows fatty breast density. In that, if the patient has any lesion, it can be very clearly seen as a white uh, dense lesion. Okay, so it will be very easy to identify. But consider a patient of uh, less than 40 years where the breast will be more in density and there will be less fat. So you see the picture in the extreme right. Okay, it is, um, it is a mammography of a dense breast. Okay. So here if a lesion is present it is not very easy to see so the sensitivity obviously decreases and that's why mammography is preferred for women over 40 years of age and it's not so commonly preferred for women less than 40 years of age it can give false negative values so what do we do for them we have ultrasound ultrasound can be used in women less than 40 years of age who has breasts with more density and less fat it is um, it obviously uh, gives uh, a better diagnosis than mammography in those patients now in whom MRI is used MRI can be used in patients who had breast surgery and we are suspecting uh, recurrence in that patient okay uh, so we need to do MRI in these patients and then it, it tells us that if the lesion which is forming after surgery is just a scar or is it a, uh, or if it's a recurrence of the malignancy we can tell that with help of MRI and it also helps to assess multifocality and multicentricity of the tumor. Uh, multifocality means uh, multiple lesions are present within one quadrant of breast. Multicentricity means multiple lesions are present in different quadrants of the breast. And that is one of uh, that is uh, those are some things which are important uh, to consider if you are trying to do breast conservation surgery. Okay, so we'll talk much about that if, uh, in our upcoming videos on breast surgeries. Okay. It also helps us to assess the extent of the ductal carcinoma in situ, and it, it also helps uh, to uh, help, and it is also one of the preferred uh, modalities for um, investigating breast uh, women with breast implants. Okay, so breast implants, women who had breast implants can be better uh, examined with the help of uh, MRI, and it is also a screening tool in high-risk women with family history. Okay, although um, uh, it is not the first choice for 
screening women uh, it is used in the following cases which I have told you okay so uh, the last part of triple assessment is histopathological examination the choices we have are FNAC which is fine needle aspiration cytology and core needle biopsy obviously the preferred one in uh, among FNAC and core needle biopsy is core needle biopsy I'll tell you why in core needle biopsy uh, is uh, gives us the definitive preoperative diagnosis okay so we get the definitive histologic diagnosis and the benefits are it differentiates um, uh, in situations like ductal carcinoma in situ versus the invasive diseases uh, which have invaded beyond the um, the ducts okay it has invaded the breast trauma so that is very important uh, in regarding management of the patient so it helps us to differentiate uh, in situ lesions like ductal carcinoma in situ and invasive disease and uh, it also help, uh, tells us about the ERPR hormone receptor status so that uh, is one of the prognostic factor and it also alters the management and we can know that with the help of core needle biopsy also well, in the case of fine needle aspiration cytology we have certain advantages like it is less invasive compared to fine needle aspiration so compared to uh, sorry core, core needle biopsy um, and it is at, and it also gives us a little diagnosis but the, it has also got certain cons like uh, it can give false negative result in various patients that's because it is highly operated and cytologist dependent so if the person who is taking uh, the sample is not adequately skilled uh, and if the patient who is observing uh, and performing the cytology is also if, if he is not uh, adequately skilled they can give false negative results so these are some of the cons and along with it, it cannot differentiate invasive cancer and in situ disease um, uh, so that is another cons but uh, um, fine uh, core needle biopsy can do that and ER and PR hormone receptor status cannot be assessed with fine needle aspiration cytology but core needle biopsy can do that so we came to the end of this video if you like this video please hit the subscribe button and don't forget to like share and comment your suggestions below so that i'll be excited and motivated to make more videos for you guys and you can follow me on instagram at medbits made simple one that's my user id and you can follow me on facebook at www.facebook.com slash medbits made simple and you can check out my blog at www.medbitsmadesimple.blogspot.com I'll be telling um, various tips and tricks which you guys ask me uh, on how to study various subjects in med school and all that and if you guys uh, like my work and if you guys want me to make more videos in the future you can consider donating, uh, uh, my, donating to my channel through this website right here which is www.patreon.com slash medbitsmadesimple and you can check out my official merge in the, uh, the website which I mentioned in the description of this video and also there are certain amazon links which are mentioned in the description if you use, use those links to purchase anything in amazon i'll get a certain part of it as commission okay so that indirectly supports my channel so that'll be uh, it'll be really nice if you consider doing that also so th thank you so much for watching this video till the end i'll see you guys in my next video